One of the first maneuvers commercial pilot students learn is called the chandelle. Simply explained, it's a full power, 180 degree climbing turn, which ends with the aircraft rolled back to wings level, approaching its minimum controllable airspeed or stall speed. We'll start out flying parallel with a long straight road, though any kind of visual reference point will work fine. We approach the mountainous terrain with three ridges around us, one just in front and two off to either side. We'll begin with our normal clearing turns and end up pointed at one of the ridges. Now we have three reference points, the one ridge in front of us, one just off our left wing, and one directly behind. Even though we're using ground cues, this isn't a ground reference maneuver like turns around a point. These references are just to be used to identify the 90 and 180 degree points of our turn. We start the maneuver from wings level and enter a bank. We then pitch up and apply full power to start a climb. Once at our 90 degree point, we begin slowly rolling out of the turn while maintaining our pitch up, bleeding off airspeed to just above stall as we come back to wings level at a new higher altitude, then bringing the nose down to level. The turns should ideally be made into the wind, so in this case they'd be coming from the north. If we did our turn away from the wind, we'd be carried further outside of our practice area, especially if we're doing multiple chandelles, as is often the case when practicing or on the check ride. The commercial ACS lists the skills that were judged on in the maneuver. First, we clear the area to make sure it's clear of traffic. The maneuver starts with a 30 degree bank turn. Once the bank is established, we simultaneously apply power and begin a smooth pitch up. So the order when starting the chandelle is bank first, followed by pitch and power at the same time. When I'm flying this, I often verbalize bank, pitch power to help keep it straight. We'll keep this climbing turn going, increasing pitch until reaching the 90 degree point. So in this first 90 degrees of the turn, we've had a constant 30 degrees of bank while our pitch has been steadily increasing. When pointed at our reference peaks, the next 90 degrees of the turn begins, where now we'll keep our pitch constant, but begin slowly rolling out of the bank, returning to wings level when pointed at the 180 reference point. We should be just above stall here, and at this time resume normal cruise flight by bringing the nose back down and reducing power. When performing this maneuver, it often helps to visualize that we're using the ground references to swap one wing for the other. In this case, we start with our 90 degree point off our left wing and end with it off of our right. Let's see it from the cockpit. This maneuver, like all commercial maneuvers, tests your stick and rudder skills, so we shouldn't rely too much on the instruments. We'll focus just on the airspeed indicator, the AI, and the altimeter, though in reality you could use just the airspeed indicator and be fine for this. We start off wings level, headed north towards that peak on the road we just saw at 2,000 feet. We'll begin with a clearing turn to the right. This gives us a chance to identify where other ground references are. It also gives us a chance to see where the wind is coming from. Again, in this case it's coming from the north, which is why the chandelle will begin with a left turn into it. It's important to start any maneuver from a stable, straight and level attitude at or below maneuvering speed. You don't want to make the maneuver tougher by starting in a strange attitude or at too high or low of an airspeed. We'll start with the bank, about 30 degrees, but don't fixate on that instrument. Once established, we'll bring in full power as we start a pitch up. We should be slowly increasing our pitch attitude while maintaining bank. Once at the 90 degree point, we start slowly rolling out of the bank while maintaining pitch. We're bleeding off airspeed in this climb here so that when we reach our 180 point and roll out of the bank, we're just above stall speed. This is where we'll let the nose down to the horizon. Allow the speed to build back up to cruise, and once there, bring the power back to cruise setting and resume normal flight. The examiner will likely ask you to perform the chandelle to both right and left sides. So we'll go right into a right chandelle to turn around 180 degrees again. Remember the steps. First it's bank, then it's pitch power. We don't have to use a specific pitch angle. Here we've used about 12 degrees, but every plane is different. We reach our 90 point and begin the rollout, keeping our pitch attitude constant here. We point at our 180 point and come out of the bank just above stall and let the nose back down and resume cruise flight at normal power settings. Let's do the chandelles while looking at our controls. The purpose of this and many other maneuvers in the commercial syllabus is to show that you can maintain positive control of the aircraft through any phase of flight. 
and this will include rudder usage to keep the turns coordinated. We begin with bank, left foot and aileron. With the bank established, it's aileron neutral and we can relieve some left foot pressure. Now it's pitch and power. Pitching up and applying power will both increase our left turning tendencies, so this needs to be matched with some right foot. This right foot pressure will increase as our pitch angle gets higher. Once through 90 degrees, we can begin the rollout with right aileron, which will require even more right foot. We need to maintain pitch attitude, and because we're getting slow here, the controls aren't as effective and we'll need more and more back elevator pressure. This, of course, will require even more right foot pressure, so that as we come out of the maneuver, we're in the somewhat awkward position of having a ton of right rudder input for our left turn. This makes sense if you think about it, though. Picture how much right foot input you have during a normal slow flight maneuver. To come out of the chandelle, we relieve back elevator pressure and relieve some right foot pressure at the same time, especially as our airspeed builds back up and we get more airflow over the control surfaces. And we finish by bringing the power back to cruise. Let's do one to the right now, because in a single engine aircraft, our inputs will be different on this side. Again, we start with bank, that's right foot and aileron, neutralize the stick and relieve some foot pressure, then it's pitch and power. Progressively more right foot as we pitch up. Coming through the 90 point, we begin rolling out to the left, and we can actually ease up some right foot pressure as we do so. Adverse yaw is counteracting all that extra left turning tendency on this side. As the speed bleeds off, we need more and more back pressure to hold this pitch attitude. And we can bring the nose back down and resume normal flight as we did before. So counterintuitively, we may end up needing slightly less right rudder on the right chandelle because of the adverse yaw on the rollout. Common mistakes on the chandelle are not maintaining pitch attitude. We need a constant pitch on that last 90 degree portion. This requires increasing back pressure as we get slower. It's not enough to just hold the elevator in the same position expecting the nose to hold its attitude. It'll drop as we slow down, and we won't end the maneuver as close to stall speed as we'd like. Another common error is lack of rudder coordination. As we saw, the rudders need to be constantly changing as bank, pitch, power, and airspeed vary. All these changes should be translated into different foot pressures, so this is where your stick and rudder skills really get tested. If you've mastered this, you should be able to complete beautiful chandelles with a bit of practice.